Good morning, my dearest brothers and sisters in Christ. God be with you and God be praised. Jesus is coming and he is coming soon. Keep your hearts lifted and your eyes up. Don't let your eyes fall away from the Lord. He is coming. He is encouraging us day by day in every word, in every prayer, in everything we do. He gives us encouragement. Now, he gave me a dream, as he often does. This one is very significant. They all are. Everything God does is significant, isn't it? This one, though, might shock some of you, but I think most of you realise that what I'm about to say is true when you look at the world. Now, the dream was I was a young woman I was working in a house, I only just started working in this house, of three elderly people, elderly women. Now, two of these elderly women were the sweetest, most adorable little old ladies you could imagine. You just wanted to give them a cuddle, their smiles were so sweet, everything was sweet. <laughs> they were gorgeous. And the third woman who sat at the head of the table, at the narrow end in, in our family, that's the head of the table. That woman was more surly. She didn't want to be bothered with the chitter-chatter. She just wanted to have her food and go. But the two oldies, old ladies, they just wanted to chitter-chatter away and giggle and talk to the staff. Lovely, lovely ladies. So in the house, just getting to know all that goes on, doing my jobs. And as they finished their meal, the two old ladies started to chitter-chatter and, and include me in on it. But the, the lady, at the older lady at the head, who was very surly, she just finished her meal, got up, not a word to the staff, not a word to anybody, got up and went out on a balcony just outside that room we were in. And it was pitch dark outside. I mean, pitch dark. There were no, there was no light outside. And she went out into that darkness. And she sat at a table and she opened a book. And there was the slightest glow coming out of the book. And she had vases, uh, not vases, but can canisters, um, bottles and jars around her in a little circular manner around her and her book on the table and she just sat there in the dark reading this very dimly illuminated book. I I have to say the book was illuminated because I saw no other source of light and it's not that the light of the book went out from it into the environment, it's as if the environment held the light around the book. It's as if it, the, the darkness was reading the book with the old lady. Yes, that's how it felt. So, that was just a side quick, wow, there's that. Now, as I'm sitting at, uh, and not sitting at the table, but as I'm addressing the ladies at the table, a young teenage girl comes in, dressed in, in what looked a bit like a white school uniform. And she came in all all distressed and she's telling the ladies oh they must come they must come they had need to get a, the ambulance because one of the other ladies one of the other little girls sorry is very very distressed she thinks she's dying and you have to come quickly please because everybody's getting so distressed at the way this girl is behaving and we all think she might die please come and help please come and help so the ladies looked at me and they said they said to me something like, I can't remember the exact words, but it, the image was that, please come with us, she doesn't know you, and we want you to tell her that you are a nurse, and we want you to tell her that she is fine, that her blood pressure's fine, everything's fine, she's going to be all right, she just needs a sleep. And I'm shocked why would they want me to say such a thing I don't know the 
the girl. And they said, oh, she, she imagines things. This is how we have to calm her down. She just imagines things. And so I thought, well, I'll follow and just see what's happening. So we went into the, um, just around the corner, this old house that was up on tall stilts. A lot of the things happen in houses on very tall stilts. And just around from it, they said they have a school. It was in the building, but beside the building. We have a school and it's an annex. And in that annex, we have young children. And this is a live-in school situation. So, I, okay, I went around the corner and there was a dormitory. And in the dormitory were lots of children on beds. And they're all looking up in terror. And this one girl is calling out and calling out. She was out of bed. She was standing. And then when she saw me, she ran to me and put her arms around me. And the, oh, I didn't say anything. I was totally shocked. And the old ladies told the girl, look, this is a nurse. And she can tell you there's nothing wrong. Okay. I looked at this child and I could see something was very wrong and in fact when I looked at all of the children I could see there was something very wrong very very wrong they were terrified in a way I've never seen children terrified in a way I've never been terrified and I've gone through some scary things in my life as most of you have if you're if you're truly a Christian so I was absolutely shocked by what I saw and all I could think of was getting this one that clung to me out. And as soon as I said, no, I better take her to the hospital. There's, there is, she is ill. There is something wrong here. Those two sweet little ladies, those butter couldn't melt in their mouth, those, I want to give you a hug, you're so gorgeous. They changed. They changed, but they didn't just change their demeanour. They changed. They were no longer old ladies. They had become demons. They had grown in size. Their clothing changed from common clothing to dark um, robes with hoods. And their faces were no longer visible. It was just darkness the hood was so dark it covered them in darkness and you could no longer see what they looked like but you knew it wasn't two old ladies and the children it's a, as if they had seen this before they just cowered back except this one that clung tighter to me so I started to leave the room with this child and these two old demons started to come after me. Now, when I stepped outside, there was no longer ground or steps. It was now a cliff. The structure under the house was no longer wooden things. It was a cliff of rocks, and they were jagged rocks. So if you had fallen, you would hit yourself on a rock and die and go into what appeared to be an abyss. It just went straight down forever. And I'm trying to get this child down. There was a tiny path, an escape path, and there was this tiny path presented to me. And I took the child and kept her very, very close. And as I did, one of these demon women started to try and grab hold of me, but it couldn't. I kept flaying it off. And then it appeared to be floating not it was no longer standing on the rocks it seemed to be floating in front of me and I struck it a mighty blow the other one was coming behind and I struck this one a mighty blow and it hit across one of the rocks and it began to tumble down absolutely tumble down into the abyss but at the moment it would have reached the base this one seemed to power up it got 
the power from that one was put into this one. So now it's twice as strong. And I am battling this one. I am battling this one while holding the child. And again, this one was dashed, fell. But now that third old lady, the one that was sitting reading a book, which I then understood that book was potions. It was incantations. It was witchcraft. As I, it was magic spells. And the bottles were their potions, their poisons. And as I saw her, she changed into this dark, bigger, darker, more powerful being. She had her own power, which was significant, much more than the others. But she powered up with their deaths. And then she came to me and she's just floating around and she's mocking and she's being very, very threatening. As she does this, I suddenly felt I'm in, I knew what it was. It was warfare. I knew who they were. It's a, a revelation that came over me. And I suddenly, realising, called on the name of Jesus. And I felt within me, my spirit grew. And my power, I powered up. It was, I saw beside the woman, the, the last of them, I saw beside her, as if it was in a computer game, I saw beside her a power-up chart. And this is how I knew what was happening. This is the thing that happened just before I powered up. Just before beside her was this power-up. And there was a symbol going up, different symbols going up. There was daggers and swords and hammers and axes and flames and different different symbols, very, very bright, pretty symbols. And the top one was a crown, a, th a three-pointed crown. I don't know if that has significance, but a three-pointed crown. And beside each one of those was a deity. And it, on one of them, I recognised Thor. And on another one, I recognised Seth or Seti. I recognised a diff couple of different demons, demon gods. And I didn't see the others. I, they were there, but I didn't see that, recognise them. So each demigod had a power-up to give to their side. But my strength didn't come from their game. My strength came from Jesus. And once I saw that and I realised, oh, I know what's happening. As soon as we get discernment and know what's happening, I powered up. And when I powered up, they fled. There was no more battle. They fled. The battle was won in the name of Jesus. I didn't do anything. God did it. Even in the dream, God did it. And I was standing there and the children were free. I knew all the children were free because they had fled. And the moment that they fled and I felt that power up, I woke up. And I tell you, I still felt the power up. It was as if I was out there. I was no longer little Robin, little old lady. My aches, my pains were all gone and I went to bed very painful that night. But everything was strong. I felt like I could run around the world in 30 seconds and not even be out of breath. And I felt like my entire essence was filling the room with power and it wasn't me it was this holy spirit in me it was so 
powerful. I just wanted to keep that feeling forever. And I woke up and I felt like I've got to do something. I've got to do something. This is, I can do anything. So I woke up and I thought, well, I better just write down a couple of notes. Well, now I woke up at quarter to three in the morning. I started to write notes and it took till five in the morning to finish writing. And here's the beauty of God, one of the many. My father woke up. He didn't get out of bed, but I could hear him mumbling in his bedroom. And singing, I could... He doesn't sing, sing. He does these noises like, mm-hmm, 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 that sort of thing. So I don't know what he's singing. It could have been prayers, songs of praise. I don't know. I, I pray it was. But he was humming away and he stayed awake the entire time I was writing till five o'clock and I was conscious of him being awake and then when when I was finished I just raised my head and he's deaf so he can't hear I just raised my head and quietly said it's all right dad I'm finished we can go to sleep and for a moment he didn't, but then as I, as I put my head down on the pillow and that moment when you just start to relax, and I could because I was in no pain, and I just started to relax, and that moment of relaxation, he stopped. He was sound asleep, and you know in the morning he didn't even know he'd been awake. He had a good resting sleep. And I thought, God had him there as my protector through the night. Isn't that wonderful? But anyhow, so now, what was it all about? I know this is a long one. Please bear with me. It's important. What was that about? Power-ups. We are being attacked. Our children are being attacked. And it's very important that you are aware of this. Satan has many, many avenues to attack us. This school wasn't, they're not kidnapping our children. Well, this wasn't about the kidnapping of children and the ransoming and all of that. This was not about that. We know that is all happening. This was the subtlety of the schooling of the children and we think, oh, that's going to school. We know they're being taught wickedness at school, but this wasn't that sort of schooling. These children were captive by the these things. These children were not given the strength to fight back in Jesus. The power is there. The power is real. I felt it, that power is real. We have, Jesus said in the last days, and he told his disciples, you've seen me do these miracles. I tell you that you will do greater in the end days. This is what he means. We can power up. This power is real. This isn't a fairy story. This isn't a fantasy. And this isn't a game. These things are real. You have the ability to get the power of the Holy Spirit in you and power up. When crisis comes, you have the power to cast out demons. You have the power within you, but you've got to feed the power. You have to call on the name. You have to acquaint yourself with the truth. You have to ask for discernment that you can recognise because initially I didn't recognise I had no power. But when I recognised, I had the power and I could call on the greatest power. That is your right as well. You don't have to be without help. 
He gave us the helper. The children are being attacked. They are being brought into these games. These games, the levels have their demonic levels and the higher level they're going, the more demon-filled they're becoming. It is possession. They are being possessed. They are being drawn into games. You must stop them from this. The games are not kind and friendly and godly. The games are pathways to Satan. They are taking over the children's hearts and minds and not leaving room for the Holy Spirit to free them. You must warn the children, show them the levels and show them if you need the symbolism. Show them how there's always little dragons or little cute little demons or cute little creatures that are actually very wicked in reality. For instance, fairies floating around. A fairy was a horrible creature that with teeth that bit. They they were ugly things. It's it's Satan is making all the things that are real seem unreal and lovely. Just as he mocks himself because he doesn't care as long as he makes you think he's not real. He doesn't mind turning his wicked evil people into what looks like cute and cuddly because the whole plan is that they take you away from Jesus. You'll find out what they're like in the end if you are unlucky enough to not be with Christ. So explain to them what is real and what Satan's drawing gets. Explain to them what is the power and how the power moves. They, When they go down, their power passes on because they're demonic. They can pass their power from one to another. Remember it says, and the beast was given the power. He was given power. It came through. We've been thinking of it as everyone voted for him. They gave him the power that way. It's not just that. That's a superficial thing. He is this, he is actually given the power of the other demons. At first he comes on the scene and he doesn't have a lot of power in himself. But when he reaches the, the powerful position, Satan always has someone in line to possess. But he's not going to fill the person with the power until it's the right one, until it's the one that succeeds and gets their way up the game to the top. While ever there are people like you and me full of the Holy Spirit, we can keep knocking away and making flee Satan's elect. Because the Holy Spirit, the spirit within us is greater than any other spirit. It's not until we get taken out with the spirit that Satan no longer has warriors to attack. He's, that they no longer have to flee. When they reach that point, Satan is going to be able to give the power and it's going to be the power of all those that have fallen and it's going to be given to them. It's a power-up system and they're indoctrinating your children through games and they are being imprisoned by their games. They're spending days at their games, hours, weeks. They're spending their life on games. This is one of Satan's biggest achievements. And we have to explain to our children what the games are. I've played many games. I'm not saying I'm not um, perfect, please. I have played games and then I've played them blindly and thinking, this is cute, this is cute. And then suddenly I stopped, oh, what's a dragon doing there? Or what's this doing there? And as we're going up the levels and I'm realising there's something and I thought, oh no, that one's obviously bad. 
I'm thinking of them as individual games. Oh, that one's not good. I can do another. Then I realise, oops, these things are now cropping up everywhere. And then God gives me this confirmation, I guess you'd call it. The games are Satan's work. He has hold of the movie industry. He has hold of the news industry. He has hold of the medical industry. He has hold of the economic industry. He is the God of this world. He's got the power and he's just sneaking a little one in for the children. One that the parents think it's all right, the children are just off doing the games. The games are deadly to the souls of the children. Look at, this, look at them and ask God for discernment. What are they seeing? Who's the friendly one? Is it good to kill and power up? Every time you kill, you power up? No. So just look at what they're seeing and then take them aside and say, well, now look, you have to choose. In most cases, you have to let them choose. But explain to them, they're showing you this creature. This creature is an evil creature. Satan wants you to think he's cute so that you will like Satan. See this creature? This creature is killing. Satan wants you to think it's all right to kill. See this? This is witchery. Satan wants you to think witchcraft is good. And you have a side talk with them. You let them know. But you also take the Holy Spirit into the conversation because the demons will flee if you take the Holy Spirit with you. So there's that part of the dream. Now, there's something else you need to know. If you notice also in these games, there's a lot of music and it's such cute little music that it just keeps you wanting to stay with it, doesn't it? That's called a sound worm. I think that's the right term, a sound worm. These little worms are demonic. Satan was a musician and is a musician. That's why he has drawn on all of these music people around the world. He has drawn on celebrity music. You'll be surprised how poorly these people actually can sing because 90% of their singing is mechanical alter alterations. If they sing out of tune, the machine fixes it. If their pitch is off, the machine will fix that. If their voice isn't strong, the machine will fix that. It's machinery. Singers of old sang and it was their voice. Their voice couldn't do anything wicked, but the machinery alters things. Now, in this sound worm, let me just tell you, it can be something that sounds like a religious song. I was caught with a sound worm, I have to tell you this, and I still have trouble with it. There are a couple of songs, but one in particular. You'll know there's a sound worm to a song if it keeps going through your mind. When you're not thinking of anything, then this comes to your mind. Or you want to sing, and remember when, what God said, when you want to sing, sing the Psalms. There's a reason. Because when you want to sing, Satan will throw a song into you. And he'll throw one of his in and he'll, just as he covers himself in light and says, I'm, I'm really the good guy. And just as he makes all of his evil, ugly demons look pretty, just as he creates Santa Claus to be such a lovely fellow. It's all meant to take your heart away from the true God. Santa Claus takes the world away from Jesus. Tinkerbell takes the world away from knowing the truth about the evil fairies. The gentle giant takes the people's mind away from the Nephilim. 
Everyone knew the Nephilim and the giants were man-eaters. All the old stories were man-eaters. Suddenly we've got gentle giants? No, it didn't exist. So Satan is clouding everything for this generation in lies and deception. We have to open their eyes to what the deception is. And when we're grounded in truth, we can do that. But now to tell you, the, the music that really, really shocked me, I thought it was beautiful music. And I would sing it with gusto. Ave Maria. I would sing that if it just kept coming to me over and over. It still does occasionally. And I have to fight it because once it comes, it's hard to get rid of. It has a worm in it. It has a sound worm that squirrels itself into you so that it's very hard to get rid of. But I found the antidote to that one. You know the words Ave Maria means all hail Maria. That means you're, you're praising, you're praying to her. The only one you can Ave is God, Jesus, Yeshua. You cannot Ave anybody. When people thought the Caesars were their gods, they'd say Ave Hail, all hail. You can't do that. So I would be singing this. And you know, I never really realised if I just tried to think, I don't know the rest of the words, I'd sing them. If I started the song, it would all follow. But if I stop and think without singing it, what what are the other words? I don't know, but I know that, are they? And it's to the wrong person. So that's got a sound worm in it. Different songs, they keep coming up. But the song, I tell you, the one that gets me out of Ave is I'll Walk With God. It's like a protest and I don't realise it. But as I start to sing it, it fills me. And it's not like I can um, fight battles with it, but it fills fills me and it chases away the sandworms when you start singing to the true God and you start filling your soul with the true word another one that that does this is um, amazing grace from that the sandworms run because they're demons they're not, they're not little worms, they're demons, but they can screw themselves into you. If you let them, your ear becomes an entry point. So you have to be careful. If you find any secular music and some music that you think is religious, listen, stop yourself if it, you if you find that you just can't get this song out of your head, be careful. It could have a soundworm. Go through the words and see, are there, is there a word that directly praises God, our God, Jehovah, or Jesus? Is, there, is it directing praise to God? Or is it out there and... You really, well, I'm not really sure what this is about, who this is to. Could be anybody. Or it could name a name. Back when I was growing up, there was songs about, um, oh, a lovely song I used to, I used to love singing it. And it turned out it was to Venus. That was it. Um, Venus. And it even called who it was. Goddess of love. Venus, goddess of love, if you will. Um, I Luckily, I can't remember it now, but I used to sing it a lot until one day I actually listened to what I was singing because I didn't listen, I just enjoyed singing it. And one day I listened to it and I thought, 
why am I sitting to Venus? It's she's she's a demon. Why am I singing to her? I hadn't thought of the words. I just loved the tune because the tune had a worm in it. You have to be careful. They can deceive you. They are deceiving. Your children are hearing music now that doesn't even have tune to it, but it has a worm. So teach your children. Arm them with the Holy Spirit. Arm them with discernment. Don't think of it as, oh, you're spoiling their fun. No, you're saving their souls. I, I know this is going on so long, I'm so sorry. But this is important. We are being attacked and it looks like it's a game. It's not a game. They are powering up. And they are using our ignorance against us. Jesus said, my people fail through lack of knowledge, through ignorance. We need to get knowledge, not world knowledge, spiritual knowledge. Not from these books all over the place, the Writings of, um, well, all the Apocrypha books are coming out now, but you'll find that a lot of them aren't really truly the Apocrypha books. You'll find out that a lot of them aren't truly written by who they say they are. There are several books of Enoch. But which Enoch? You see, there was, even in the old days, there were two Enochs. There was the sons of Cain, Enoch, who came on the scene very early. And then there was the sons of Seth, Enoch. Sons of, they were both sons of Adam, but from the Seth line, you had Enoch who walked with God. But the other Enoch, the Cain Enoch, did not walk with God. He was wicked as were all of Cain's children. But the Enoch that was the grandfather of Noah, or the great-grandfather of Noah, he walked with God. You have to be careful who is the author of which books. And has the book had alterations done? What? How big were the edits done? Was it original source? And does it align with the word of God? Because if it doesn't align with the word of God, it's not his word. So we cannot take it. We take God's word. So fill yourself with the knowledge of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. And I tell you, when you are in need and that Holy Spirit fills you, you will feel power beyond beyond comprehension. I would love if we could walk around feeling that we are 10 feet tall and power just bursting from our every pore, from our inner soul. If we could feel that every day, the demons would have fled the planet. If every Christian could call on that every moment. But to know we have it, at our, at our call is certainly going to fill you with the knowledge that you do not have to fear. It doesn't matter what happens to our bodies, my darlings. Our souls have a power given to us by the Spirit of God and that power, the flesh may kill the flesh, but there is no way an evil spirit is going to drag away your spirit. Your soul is safe in the hands of the living God. When you call on the name of Jesus, when you call on the strength of the Holy Spirit, you are powerful beyond all imaginations and no power-ups that the devil can give 
can overcome you. You are an overcomer. You will succeed when you call on the name of Jesus. There is no, literally, there is no other name on which you can call. You can't call on these people that call on Mary and on St. Patrick and St. John and St. Watsies and, and the ones that call on Muhammad's and, and Vishnu and all of those. That's all garbage gobbledygook. Every other, you have only two choices. You call on God, the one true God, or you calling on Satan. Every other, every other call you make, it's a party line. You realize the young people don't know party lines. When phones were first invented, a lot of people got the same phone number. So you would ring a number and it could be a party line and the wrong house could pick up the phone and you're talking to the wrong person. But it all went to the same number. Or you could have, you could be talking to somebody and somebody else picks up and they're in another house and they're talking, oh, who are you and who are you? And you're having, that's why they called it a party line, because you could all get together and be talking, not knowing one another. And that's what this world is. You can choose the one line, the direct line to God through Jesus Christ. You can ask the Holy Spirit to direct, to connect you. That's a, a direct line, one number line. Or you can do the party line. But they all lead back to the one number, 666. Doesn't matter who you call. Remember the movie, Ghostbusters, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters, who are you going to call? God or Satan? There are many paths to Satan. There is one path to God. Remind your children, teach your children, bring them up the way they are meant to go. Don't let them be fooled by the world. If you have to send your children to school, let them know the truth. Let them know that they will be taught these things that are not true. Let them understand there is truth and there is this other, the lie that is being taught. Teach your children that the lie will be taught to them at school. Teach them only, only believe the things that are taught about mathematics, geography in some cases now even that's corrupted, probably mathematics and how to read and write, but preferably teach your children that with yourself anyway. If you can, but if you can't tell your children, learn those. They are allowed to parrot the other information back that the teachers want, but always let them know it is what is taught. It is not the truth. Equip them to know how to, to say things without defying God. They don't ever have to say, I believe that evolution exists. They can say something like, science, modern science tells us. That doesn't mean they believe it. Modern science tells us that this is what is happening. They don't have to get in altercations at a young age. But as long as you teach them the truth and that they know the truth. I think that might be the end of this, darlings, because I can hear Dad stirring and that usually means God's ready to finish with me. But remember the power-ups. Each one gives power to the other until you call on the name of God. They must flee. In Jesus' name, they will flee 
And if you have truly called upon his name, the demons will flee you. Doesn't mean the flesh will flee you. The flesh and the spirit are different. Now, let me take another moment. If if you're still with me, I, I praise God that you've got a heart to hear. I am getting messages that break my heart. We're not talking about one. I tell you, if you think you're alone in this, you're not alone. So many people these days are having their families turn against them because they love God. This breaks my heart. Children are being taken from parents. The governments, the officials are siding with the unrighteous, not with the righteous. Because you can see everywhere the governments and the judicial society has gone back to the days of Sodom. We are there. This is exactly what happened in Sodom. When somebody tried to do the righteous thing, the courts upheld the unrighteous. We are faced with a world that is against us. They hate us because they hate Jesus. And they hate Jesus unjustly. He died for them too. And some of them may yet be saved, so we don't ever give up. But we have people that are suffering greatly. I ask you, I, I ask you humbly, Please pray for your brothers and sisters. I can't tell you names, but please pray for them. They need our prayers. They need our strength because just as the demons power up from their own, we can power up with each other because in prayer comes great strength. If you will pray for someone, we can be warriors in the action, but we're not all in the action. And we need to power up our warriors in the action. We need to be prayer warriors. We need to give the strength of prayer to others. Their difficulties are different to your difficulties. If we all pray for one another, send God the message that we, as an entire body of Christ, put our prayers to others. He will answer those prayers and his will be done. We don't always get what we fleshly want, but he will always turn evil to his good. So pray for his good in every situation. Pray for his strength in those that are being attacked. Pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to make the demons flee, even if the flesh doesn't flee. Protect them from the demons. Give them the strength of the Holy Spirit that they can feel that, that growth. It was I won't say intoxicating because that's not what I mean. It was a feeling of such inner power, inner strength and such connection to God. I didn't feel connected to anything else. I didn't feel it was my strength. I felt like God was pouring strength into me so much that it overflowed into the atmosphere around me. It was the greatest power up you could imagine. And I know it's real. I felt it after I woke. It stayed with me after I woke. If there had been anything there, I was ready for it. So help others be ready, but let yourself be ready. Remember, call on him. 
Remember if there's a sound worm, turn it around, bring in the songs of praise, the true songs of praise. Declare, I'll walk with God from this day on. His helping hand I'll lean upon. Don't leave doubt for demons. Don't make a song, don't sing wishy-washy songs that really don't praise God, that are all about you. The songs from um, Hill Church, Hill, Hill Church, something like that. They are nearly always you singing about you and your, I'm going to do this, I'm this, I'm this. They're not coming from a godly place. The songs that you want are the songs that are praising the Almighty. The songs that are saying, I'm going to, the only I is, I'm going to depend on him. I'm going to trust him. They're the songs. The Psalms, if you can't remember the tunes, read the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. It's all about him. They make the demons flee. They stop the sound worms. They give you strength in Christ. Power-ups. If you see evil attacking you, then you sing. When I'm going through the shopping centres, I don't care. I don't do it for glory. I don't do it for entertainment. I don't do it for anything like that. I do it for salvation. Because when I go through the shopping centres, there's nearly always background music that is full of sound worms. So what do I do? I sing to myself. Amazing grace, how great thou art that saved a wretch like me. I'm going around the shopping centre doing my groceries and I'm singing to myself. I haven't got anyone with me, Dad, sitting even if he's with me, he can't hear very well. So I'm doing my shopping with Dad there and I'm singing. Or he wants to sit out and wait for me on a bench seat. I'm going through by myself. I'm singing as I go and I can't hear the sound worms. I'm protecting myself. Do it. Doesn't matter what you sound like. Do you think anyone else cares what they sound like? These pop singers and rappers, do you think they sound good? No, but they make a thousands of millions of dollars between them. It's not. God gave every bird a voice to sing. He gave every human a voice to sing, to sing his praises. You think back to your family, some of you probably don't even know your family, but the old days, I tell you, and I tell you truly, everybody sang the good, the bad and the ugly. They sang. It's only the advent of Satan's radios and he's the Lord of the airs, remember, the principalities of the air. When they came they bombarded people with music. So you listened instead of sang. My generation is when singing stopped on the masses and listening started. But when I was a little child, I think I've told you this before, when I was a little child it was common to walk down the street and there were people singing in the street. It was common and they didn't sing alone because if somebody started singing a song, somebody else walking past would start singing with them and stop for a minute and they'd sing. My father talked about in the war when he was in, going through 
occupied territory and they'd go through a town or a village and there would be people singing or they would hear dad singing. He used to sing. He would be singing. And the locals, this was in a peaceful period, and the locals hearing him sing would start singing with him. The enemy sang because they were songs of God. There was a time in, in I think it was the First World War, one of the two world wars. There was a time, and I, I pray that you know this, but if not, be in, be thrilled because there were the enemy on either side and it, this was one of those no man lands between them and one side started to sing songs to God at Christmas time and the enemy they were fighting that very day to death and their enemy when they heard the songs of praise to God being sung they sang the song, they knew the song different language but they knew the song and two enemies, two armies were singing praise to God for that night they didn't want to fight their generals were possessed the governments of their countries were possessed. But the men loved their God. And through that, many lives were saved the next day. Because how do you kill somebody you just sang with the night before? Their hearts were turned. Yes, down the road they had to go back to fighting. But there was a reprieve through God's praises there was a reprieve in the deaths God wants you to forgive one another he wants you to pray for one another and in your praises of God comes great strength so I doubt that many of you have stayed to this but those that have as I say I pray that God will be with you this day and every day. I pray that he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace, peace of beyond all understanding. And I pray that you find the strength of the power-ups of the Holy Spirit. Avoid the worms. Avoid the education and teach your children the way they are to go. Because we're about to go soon. I don't care what others say. There is no way in, in, in eternity that God would be visiting so many people who are so, so wicked and changing them and turning them. Sorry, my hair... I'm just conscious of that then. Vanity of vanities. I washed my hair and it's starting to dry. There is no way that a time when Jesus is coming to Muslims, to Hindus, to killers, murderers, rapists, and saying, I am real, I am he, call on me, trust in me. He is saving the most wicked of wicked now. And they are turning to him. They are repenting. And they are testifying. He's giving dreams to those that aren't in the battlefield. Dreams of warning, dreams of how to. He's giving instruction dreams. He's giving encouragement I pray that mine are encouraging, even though this sounds a little bit scary. The encouragement is the power is in Christ. When you call on that name, there is no other name by which you can overcome. You cannot overcome by calling on Mary. You cannot overcome by calling on dead saints. Christ is the living God. 
you can only call on that name. He is the God Almighty. He is the I Am. He is Jehovah. Throughout he said I am, I was, and am and will be. He has said that all along. So we have to. He said he walked with Moses. That was the Lord, capital letters, in Hebrew, yod Hey vav Hey Yehovah. That's who that was. That was Jesus. Whenever man saw God, man saw Jehovah, Jesus, Yeshua. The Father, if you saw him, you could not see him and live. And so God was so gracious, he gave you a a facsimile. Could we call it? just trying to get my head around how you would call that. He gave you a way of seeing him without seeing him. He gave you, I am the way, the truth, the light. He gave you a door with which you could see. He gave you eyes to see and ears to hear. He gave it all to you. Now go forth and use it. Use the knowledge. Take the power. It is yours. If you are in the difficult situation, you have the power to overcome in the spirit. If you are not in the situation, you have the power to empower and power up those that are in the battle. Because we're all in the battle. God knows it. God is watching everything. God is waiting for you to say I cannot do this alone I need you please not that he wants you to fail he wants you to survive but he wants you to acknowledge that you are not doing this on your own that you are never alone he wants you to realize he is there he is with you give God the glory you will have the strength. All of those kings, Nebuchadnezzar, remember? God gave him everything. And then he turned around and said, wasn't I good? And God took it all away from him until he acknowledged where the power was. It wasn't him. It was God. That's in our lives too. We can't go around saying, Aren't I clever? Aren't I good at this? Can't I fight demons? Can't I do this? We can't do that. Isn't that preacher really, he's good. Look, he can do that. He can do that. No, he can't do anything. There are only two forces. And magic is real. Oh, this is, oh, I'm sorry. I was meant to tell you magic is real. Oh, those that turned off. I'm sorry, Lord, I took too long. Magic is real. It was in the days of Moses, remember? They did make serpents out of of sticks. They did cast down their, that was real. They did mimic all of the first few um, of Moses' plagues. They brought about duplicates. They had powers, the powers of Satan. But once God got further on, then they could no longer reproduce it because they didn't. They had this power, but then God took it to the next level. He powered up. They couldn't go beyond where their limits were. We have the power of God. We can go beyond. That's why they flee once we power up. But Satan, just as he's pretended and deceived people with all of these, isn't it cute, isn't it lovely? 
it's not real. You know it's not real. You know, there's no such thing as Satan. There's no such thing as all of this. It's just cute. They put out all of these magicians. They're on the television all the time. They're doing all sorts of things. And then you see, oh, well, this is how it was done. It was a trick. It was a trick. Some of it's not trickery. There is real, real magic. And it's by the forces of Satan. He does give power. The Bible says that in the end days, the false prophet and the Antichrist will do miracles. Not will do trickery, will do miracles. And it will deceive the world to believe he is God. Miracles, magic. Magic is the false miracles but because they're done by the wrong power. A true miracle is done by God. But magic is done by Satan. And it has a legitimate place in the world. They try to make you believe it's all smoke and mirrors. Isn't that the term they came up with? Smoke and mirrors. That's to put you off the trail. It does exist. And it will come stronger. But you have the power against their magic. They're powering up. You power up. Well, I believe that's it, Lord. So I'll say it. And I mean it with all my heart. God be with you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May the Lord grace you with all the power in the Holy Spirit. And may you walk daily in his light. May your steps be the steps of a follower. May your heart be filled with his love and his glory. May your mind be filled with wisdom and discernment. And may you come into his glory. And may you be ready when he comes for us. He is coming. He loves you. He wants you to be saved. God be with you all. May my love go to every one of you. May my prayers be for every one of you. And may you pray for one another. Pray for those who are fighting to keep their families together. Pray for the children being ripped from the arms of, of godly parents and put into ungodly world. Pray for the hedge of God's protection around those children and for the comfort of the heart of the parent. Pray for those that are losing their homes all over the world. Pray for those who feel so attacked that they have no strength to call. Pray and power them up. Pray for those in great financial difficulty. And pray for those who are doubting. Pray for everyone and let your prayers meld together in sweet, sweet odour for the Lord. He hears, he sees, and he will intervene because he is God, almighty, ever-present. He is the creator and he loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever will repent and believe and trust and know him, you must know him. I beg of you, get to know the Lord. You don't want him to say to you, go away. I never knew you. 
I cannot think of a more heartbreaking thing to hear. So trust him, love him, let him into you. Let the Holy Spirit fill you and call on the name. And God be praised. I pray that I am worthy. Every day, the Bible says to pray you are worthy. Every day. So let's do it. It helps strengthen us. When you pray that, some people say, Oh, you know if you've saved, you know. Then why did Jesus say, pray always to be found worthy? Pray always, not pray once, pray always. Because it strengthens you in your faith. You, in praying that prayer, remind yourself as well as asking God, but you're reminding yourself, oh, I've got to be worthy. <laughs> And what does being worthy mean? I've got to remember God in my day, this day. You've got to remember God. You can't put him aside for the day and just remember him at prayer time. You can't put him aside through the week and just remember him on the Sabbath or the Sunday, whichever day you choose. You can't just go through your life having said one prayer and Go about as if God doesn't exist anymore. It helps you remember. Oh, yes. He's there. <laughs> I know that's a flippant way to think of it, but if it helps you, use it to remind you of who is the king. Use it to remind you that you are not yourself. You are not owned by yourself. You were bought at a price. And it was a hefty price. So I'm definitely leaving it there. Please be a prayer warrior. Please make your prayers help those who are actually in the fight. God loves you. And I love you. And I so want to see you soon. He said, time for rapture, prepare the bride, get ready. You are the bride. If you're watching this, you have an invitation to be the bride. So get ready. Think seriously about it. Don't let distractions pull you away. Don't let this world make you think it's a long time off yet. You don't know if you die tomorrow. Are you ready? Get ready. Don't let the world give you excuses. I am sorry, though, that it's gone so long. But I pray that you've got some encouragement and some understanding from it. So God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, my loves. Amen. Amen.